For the reasons set forth below, it is my opinion to a reasonable degree of legal certainty that the judicial conduct of Justice Engeron and his law clerk in this action has violated the code of judicial conduct. Okay. Well, why does his opinion matter? Well, Mr. DeMarest was elected to the Supreme Court of the New York for the 4th Judicial District, actually serving as the longest member of the bench in the history of the county court. He now practices a mediator in civil litigation, so I say he's pretty qualified to weigh in on this. First off, aside from the ridiculous fact that this entire case has no victim, yes, we've talked about this before, no one has been harmed here. Banks willingly entered into these loans and transactions with the Trump organization. You can knock Trump for overvaluing his properties all you want, but all of these banks did their own appraisals, then loaned the money to his companies. Trump then paid them back with interest, never missed a payment, and everyone was happy. Banks are some of the greediest sharks across any industry, folks. You don't think for five seconds that if Trump owed them any money whatsoever, they wouldn't have filed their own motions to get repaid? But they didn't because they were never harmed. This entire case is built on Letitia James's opinion of who was defrauded and for how much. And I don't know if she's pulling numbers out of her hat, but these are starkly different numbers from Trump's and the banks and even Forbes. For instance, in 2016, the year Trump was elected to president, Forbes cited his net worth at $4.5 billion, and they notoriously estimate low on all things. Letitia James, according to her filed estimates, under penalty of perjury, by the way, put his net worth at just $1.6 billion. That's a pretty big difference. Consider this is the same woman who valued the 20-acre, 62,000-square-foot Mar-a-Lago property at $18 million. When just down the street at 137 Woodbridge Road, a half-acre plot with 9,200-square-feet house went for half that, nine-quarter million dollars. So a half-acre. 9,000 square foot property, a block away, sold for half of what Mar-a-Lago, according to Letitia James, is valued at? I'd say her estimates are knowingly false, not even probably false. Nevertheless, this case was brought, and it was brought to the most partisan judge Letitia James could find. And the Trump legal team is not even making the motion to dismiss based on the fact that it shouldn't be in front of Angeron in the first place. If this case were to be tried like every other case of its nature, it would have been tried in a property court. Trump's team actually tried to have it moved there, but it was denied by Angeron. Why? Well, because if I was a betting man, I'd say that Letitia James didn't want it there. And now, as it has become increasingly apparent that not only Judge Angeron, but also his law clerk, Allison Greenfield, has given what I consider beyond the perception of impropriety. And this is one of the bigger concerns with the trial in its entirety, given the judicial standard that is, quote, a judge shall be faithful to the law and shall not be swayed by partisan interest, public clamor, or fear of criticism. Now, aside from the judge already conceding that Trump was guilty before the trial even happened, not only is his staff seemingly guilty of violence, but the judge Engron is too posting in his private capacity in the Wheatley School Alumni Association newsletter his open condemnation and disparaging comments about Donald Trump, his children, even his attorney, Alina Haba, sharing a litany of editorial articles with accusations, insults lobbied at the defendants that he is currently presiding over. Oh, but it gets worse. Turns out his law clerk also runs contrary to that judicial standard. There's always balancing of factors that you use when you're deciding any particular legal issue. You're looking at precedent, you're looking at the parties, you're looking at the unique facts of the case. But also in that balancing of factors, one thing that I think is incredibly important to consider, what would the people who elected me want me to do? And is there any precedent or is there any distinguishing factors and precedent that would allow me to achieve that outcome? Because at the end of the day, I'm here to serve the constituents. I'm here to create justice for the constituents and the citizens of the second district. No, that's not how it works, lady. Further, the judicial standard is for the presiding judge also to ensure that there is none, like zero, absolutely no appearance of impropriety whatsoever. His clerk's conduct does, clearly doesn't clear that bar.